So let's continue a little bit. Okay. The consequence of this one, as we mentioned, would be the solid composition. If you do this solidification fashion, the solid composition will not be uniform. The slow diffusion or no diffusion leads to what? Significant variation. I actually I should change this to slow slash no diffusion. It will lead to significant variation means change in local solid composition from one point to another point. Now let's look at uh, another phase diagram. It's not a eutectic, but it's okay. We are looking at the phase diagram. The vertical axis is temperature, still binary. The horizontal would be composition. We are doing solidification for a system of this composition. Here is what? Single phase liquid. Make sense? Bottom here is single phase alpha. In between is alpha plus liquid. Okay, so let's say we start from this point. Initially, I should be all what? All liquid, uniform. Make sense? And then when I cool to this point, I form a little bit of what? I started to form a little bit of what? So called alpha solid phase within the liquid. But it's very few, little alpha within liquid. This is kind of a microstructure, make sense? And if I'm here, what's the alpha solid composition? Well, this is our liquid line. The alpha solid composition is determined by the intercept with the what? Phase boundary. The alpha initially would have what composition? Do you see that roughly? 46% of nickel. So the first bit of solid has 46% of nickel. Now let's cool down a little bit lower to this temperature. In this case, we are assuming uniform mixing, uniform liquid composition, but solid uh, no diffusion, right? Which means when the system temperature reaches this temperature, what would be the newly formed solid composition? If the system temperature is here, the newly formed solid composition would be the intercept of isothermal waste phase boundary, which is what? If you read it roughly, 40. Make sense? So, you see, this is the microstructure. I still have a little bit of solid uh, dispersed within what? Liquid. But in the solid, in the very dead center, the composition is what? 46, which is the first form. And outside, it's going to be roughly this 40% nickel. Make sense? And then if I cool it further down to this point, just barely above this point. Make sense? Just barely above this point. What will be the solid composition that's right at the interface between liquid and solid? It will be just this 38%. Make sense? 38%. Make sense? So that's the microstructure here. Solid within liquid, the dead center is still 46. Slightly outside, I have 40. And further outside, I have this 30, 30 something, right? 35. Make sense? But then when I'm here, because as I said, we are doing solidification. We are doing solidification, but not under equilibrium condition, not very slowly, fast. The solid composition is going to change. What does this red dash line mean? That red dash line means the so-called quote unquote X bar as the average solid composition. Make sense? Because the first bit of solid formed within the center is this guy. 
at the surface, at the interface is this guy. Somewhere in between, that's my what? Average solid composition. So when I'm at this temperature, my solid average composition is, is here. What's my liquid composition? Well, we said uniform liquid follow equal liquid line. Li liquid is here. So based on your level rule, if I'm at this temperature, the proportion of liquid is zero or more than zero. The proportion or fraction of liquid would be the liquid, remember, on the left side here. Liquid on the left side. Liquid would be the opposite arm from here to where? To the dashed line divided by the total. So that's still some liquid left. And that liquid would continue to what? Go through solidification process. Make sense? It will continue to go through solidification process. And it will be have an even outside, even lower composition. Make sense? So that's what we got. We are going to have solid, depending on when the solid form, they would have this so-called coring. Repeat with me, coring. Core, right? The center, core, coring. This is gonna, from center, outside, layer by layer, we're forming this solid. And this layer by layer, I have a gradual change in what? Composition. Is this what you want, typically? For engineering application? Typically, no. Because quite often when you sell your customer product, uh, they want a uniform, predictable mechanical or whatever property. And you have a such local composition change. You are for sure your property will what? Change from location to location, depending on which sl slice the customer got. You see what I mean? And that quite often, quite often is so-called detrimental to what you want. It's kind of interesting. People cool it down. Why do they cool it down slightly faster than equilibrium? Why? Why? No, not so much to get it harder. You want to accelerate production. Remember, I told I told you. Why do you heat up so slowly? quite often for production, for manufacturing, you don't want to wait forever for equilibrium to happen because it's expensive. Makes sense? Time is money, right? So you give up something, but at the same time, you want faster time, you want efficiency, but at the same time, you are sacrificing in what? Uniformity. Sacrificing in composition uniformity and as a result in property uniformity. And quite often people have to do some other trick to make it more uniform again after they got this. Make sense? There's no free pass. You get something, quite often you lose something. You have to again do some compensation. But that's what people normally get, a so-called coring effect. And quite often when people are dealing with alloy, especially those so-called non-dilute alloy, have significant alloy elements. Okay, and uh, as we uh, talked about earlier, if it's eutectic, they would always reach eutectic point, reach the lowest uh, melting temperature. Then at that eutectic temperature, all the remaining liquid would go what? Go into solid, go through the so-called eutectic reaction, going from eutectic composition liquid into whatever, the alpha plus beta solid, okay? So as a result, if it contains eutectic structure, they would contain this guy may be called chlorine, which means the composition may change. But then in between, I may have so-called uh, layered or lamellar structure. You see this? Layered structure. Alpha, beta, alpha, beta. Closely spaced. People call it uh, eutectic or lamellar structure or simply just a layered structure between the two phases, alpha and beta, okay? So that's the consequence when we move away from equilibrium cooling, very slow cooling to, okay, reasonably fast cooling that assume stirring within the liquid to make sure liquid composition is uniform, but no diffusion in solid. Within a few hours, it doesn't happen. 
especially thin. Okay, within the, the maybe diffusion happen within a few micron, but quite often these microstructure are hundreds micron or even millimeter or centimeter scale. Our variation is we are talking about quite often for large ingot solidification. We are talking about millimeter or even centimeter scale. Well, diffusion only happens on the micron scale. You see what I mean? So essentially, you can treat it as no diffusion in solid. Okay.